This tutorial was recorded in the middle of 2012. I'm releasing it in the middle of 2013 because I've been a bit rubbish. Back then Lightroom 4 was still pretty new, Google had not yet bought Nick's software and I still had a full beard. The picture I'm going to work on was taken during a lighting workshop which was taught by my friend Will Chung. He set the lights, I took the picture. Enjoy the tutorial. So what Will was trying to show here was how you can get a nice graduated background. So uh, behind Beth, behind her body there, hidden, uh, uh, she's hiding the light, um, is a light that's pointing sort of three quarters down towards the ground and giving us this sort of fall off at the edge of the beam of light. So when it fires, you know, you're getting a strong point of light down here and it gradually falls off and you get this gradient up the picture. Now it's a nice effect if you're going for um, a colour graduated background like that, good for headshots, good for sort of office portraits and things like that. As it turns out in this particular case it's not really what I decided I wanted because I looked at this picture and my first thought was perfume advert. You know the kind of thing I'm talking about where you've got um, uh, a beautiful black and white model um, on one side and the perfume bottle on the other side. Um, so here's an example of the sort of thing I had in mind. This is this is the effect that we're going to go for, although the version I'll show you today is just a sort of close-up headshot version of this. But that was the, the image I had in mind when I looked at that picture. So um, I'm going to show you step by step how I sort of went from here to there. Um, and it was a sort of a discovery process on the way. And it turned out that this graduated background gave me some gave me some challenges with, with processing this because it wasn't really what I wanted. So first of all, um, because we are going for black and white, and I'm going to do the black and white using uh, Nick Silver Effects, which is an extremely good product if you're looking for black and white conversion. But first of all, um, I'm just going to kill the vibrance a lot because that really uh, takes a lot of the distracting elements out. Um, and I, I find now that I've started doing this a lot with the Vibrant slider, dragging it down, and you can do the same thing with saturation, but in this case the Vibrant is going to work better for us because um, what the Vibrant slider does is it affects different colours by different amounts. The, the very saturated colours are affected more by, the, by reducing the Vibrance than the lesser saturated colours. So this blue on the dress here, which is really rich blue, uh, is going to get desaturated much more quickly than the skin. And that simple difference in the speed that they're adjusted brings their saturations closer together. And as I've talked about many times in the show, um, one of the things that you're always looking to do is reduce and simplify, bringing tones closer together, uh, you know, where, where you want to contrast boost it, where, you, where you're not trying to draw attention to something, reduce those differences and make them closer together. So in this case we've got this blue dress, which isn't what this photogra photograph is about. This picture is a picture of Beth and that's what we really want to focus on here. So taking that blue down is nice, it takes the skin down as well, but not by so much, it brings things closer together. So in this case the vibrant slider is what I want. Um, but I also want to do a little bit of work on the light here because I'm going to do a, a fairly heavy black and white conversion on this in a moment and I just want to make sure I've got a good range of tones and my lightness values are in about the right place. So we're going to be doing all of this with an eye on the histogram and remember I'm going for a sort of a high key look here so it's going to be that the histogram leans fairly heavily towards the right hand side. Um, there is no right histogram, remember that, that's a, a key message. There is only a, a, a right image, you know, you, you have an idea of what you want in mind and if you're shooting for, you know, a, a white husky dog in a snow scene, it should all be over to the right hand side. What you don't want is a whole load of data vanishing off the right hand end so that this peak is leaning against the right hand end of your histogram because that will indicate that there are some overexposed areas. And remember you can check for over and under exposure by clicking these little triangles in the corner of your histogram here. And if I was to overexpose this deliberately, look, let's push that right up, you can see that's overexposed now. If I turn on the overexposure, you can see it lights up red where the overexposed areas are. So let's drag that back down to, remember you can double click on these sliders and they go back to their neutral point. So I just double clicked on the exposure slider there, double click on the dot and it goes back to zero. 
Um, so what I'm going to do first of all, I'm just going to play around with these new sliders. These are Lightroom 4's brand new sliders. We've not got the same four sliders we had before. We've got uh, highlights, shadows, whites and blacks, which are a much more naturally understandable uh, way of thinking about your, your program. But they translate to the same sort of areas on histogram. Remember in Lightroom 3, you could mouse over the histogram and you would light up different areas and each different area would affect a different slider. Same thing happens here. If you mouse over the middle look, you can see it's lighting up the word exposure. And if I was to click and drag on that, it's moving the exposure slider. Let's just reset that back to where it was. If I, if I mouse up to the, uh, the bright quarter tones, we're working on the highlights. If I go to the dark quarter tones, we're working on the shadows. Below that, we've got the blacks. And above the highlights, we've got the whites. Um, and those would be the sort of similar equivalent to what we had before in Lightroom 3 with the, uh, the recovery slider and the black point slider. Um, so just a little bit more common sense here, but uh, far more important than the extra common sense is the extra latitude. These sliders have been reprogrammed, really, so that they work uh, um, differently than the old ones did. You can do quite a lot more with these sliders now to increase your contrast and to change the tonality of your picture without um, without so much you know, risk of, of uh, wrecking the, the way the tonality works uh, and giving yourself strange colour casts and things like that. So um, I'm going to start off just by, by pushing the highlights up. That's not doing a huge amount for us, but I do want to just generally go brighter. I think you see more change in the histogram there than you would do in the actual picture. But it's it's making that background a bit brighter for starters, which is generally a good thing. Because I want to minimise that gradient in the background a bit. Now the shadow slider is making quite a big difference here. And remember, we're going for high key. So I'm going to deliberately bring in a lot of shadows. And that's a lot like the fill light slider on the old Lightroom 3. So if you drag it all the way up, you're going to get a... Uh, a bit more of a, a, an HDR sort of effect. But look, in the fill light slider in, in Lightroom 3 would have made it look really weird. Here the shadow slider still looks pretty good. It's quite a presentable image, even at full 100 plus 100%. Now I don't want to go quite that far, but I'm going to go a good way far. Uh, the white slider is going to just push those very brightest tones up and down, and I'm just going to let it go a little bit up towards, to, towards uh, white. Normally, skin tones, you kind of want them sort of in the uh, the 50 to 70% range, uh, brightness values wise. And you can check where your tones are by going to the tone curve and clicking on this little dot. This is the direct adjustment tool. And if you point at the picture, you can see, if I put it on that brightest part of the forehead there, we're right up at the 90%. If I, if I mouse over there, a dot is appearing on the tone curve there, around about 90, 80, 80 to 90% there. In fact, no, look, it says in the corner, 85% thereabouts. It even, it even says in the corner of the, the tone curve. And if I go to the darker parts of the face, we're at about 60% thereabouts. Um, so we're in a good sort of range. It's brighter than you would normally have, but not wildly brighter. So that's, that's about where I want it. Um, finally, I want to come down to the black slider and just bring a little bit more contrast back into my image just by dragging those blacks down. I don't want to drag all the shadows down because I don't want the image to be dark. I just want to give it a bit more bite just by dragging that black slider down just to touch there. And let's just see if I can give it a little bit more brightness with that to, with that highlights. I'm looking I think that's looking pretty good right up there. Now um, so I think that's a pretty good starting point. I'm trying to imagine this without the colour, but I don't want to go into black and white here because I'm going to do that in a minute with a much better tool. Um, so I'm just imagining this uh, just for the sort of the brightness values at the moment. Um, one of the other things that might help, by the way, is if I use the uh, hue saturation luminance sliders down here and using the saturation section, I grab the blue slider and drag that down and I can just desaturate that, that blue dress even more if I want to, which is, uh, I think, just helps the image. Uh, one of the other things I might do here, by the way, uh, under the Adjustment Brush tool, um, I have uh, an adjustment of my own that I call Blue Eyes, which is basically the same as Iris Enhance, which is one of the standard built-in uh, brush types. Uh, blue Eyes is the same thing, but with just a touch of blue in the colour section. And if you're shooting somebody with blue eyes, this uh, really just lifts their eyes a little bit. Um, a lot of models have got blue eyes. And I'm just zooming in there, making my brush the right size for her eyes. Let's get a bit more 
flow rate on my brush. Remember you can change the flow rate of your adjustment brush with the number keys 1 through 0. 0 will take you up to 100%, 1 will do 10% and I'm just painting that little blue adjustment in there. Now that's not a huge adjustment but there it is without and there it is with. And you can see it's lightened it a little, we've got just a touch of exposure increase. It's given it much more structure because we've got a clarity boost. It's pushing any saturation for any colour that was already there. In this case it was fairly grey to begin with so that's not really doing a lot for us in this case. And it's also adding a little bit of blue in. And I think that's quite a nice little adjustment. If I just zoom back out and turn off that uh, adjustment brush. Remember the keyboard shortcut for the adjustment brush is the K key so tapping K will turn that on and off and um, uh, you can see it's just a little bit of blue in the eyes and that match with the, with the dress is quite a nice, if, if, you know, if I was to push the blue up a little and then the blue in the dress down a little we could bring those tones together and make quite a nice colour version of this image but that's not what I'm doing today, what I'm doing today is the black and white. Photo Walkthrough is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com.